What's up guys, it's BD here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the new Razer Viper Mini, the follow-up to last year's number one mouse, the Viper Ultimate. Now this is in a new, smaller form factor. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Razer, listen to us. I even stated this in my Ultimate review, and I know Razer's probably watching this. If you guys made a slightly smaller version of this mouse, this would probably be the end game for most people out there. I was like, you know what? I love this mouse, it's just a little bit too big. I would love to have just a smaller form factor of this. I think it would be perfect. What do you know? Razer Listen, and they are back with another hit. But that is not the only thing that they changed with this mouse. There's also some more improvements that they made with the mouse that a lot of people were complaining about before. So today we're gonna get into all of that and then some. Before we go on to the meat and potatoes of this mouse, I just wanna say, this mouse is only $40. What? Razer is charging $40 for mice now? What, like, what is going on in the world right now? Like, this is insane for what they're giving you. So the build quality is what we've come to expect from Razer over the past year. If you love the Razer Viper Ultimate, you are gonna love this mouse. They did change the side grip, so they got rid of the two side grips. They've also moved the DPI button from the bottom of the mouse, now up to the top of the mouse, and they've also removed the indicator. I wish that they would have left the indicator on the mouse because it's always nice to just see a visual representation of what DPI you're at especially if you're in a tournament setting you want everything to be exactly how you had it back home i feel like the coating of the mouse is actually really good it's textured it's pretty grippy i know some people had issues with the side grips on the original viper ultimate being too slippery if you have sweaty hands so if you have sweaty hands out there this mouse actually is an upgrade from the razor viper ultimate they've also listened to the feedback and they've changed it from five mouse feet two at the front, two at the back, and one around the sensor, to now having three mouse feet, one big one at the front and one big one at the back, and one around the sensor. So I did use PTFE for the back and the front, but they decided to use just a normal one around the sensor. I wish they would have put the same material that they use on the front and back feet on the middle around the sensor. It just makes sense to me. I don't know why they just decided to use a different material than what was on the other two. That being said, these are really thick feet. They are 0.8 millimeters, whereas like hyperglides, those are about 0.85 millimeters. So you're getting some really thick feet here. And they glide perfectly. I actually prefer this Zowie style of having two big mouse feet over having the four on the original Viper Ultimate. So the scroll wheel feels a little bit lighter this time. It also has these nice ridges that really catch your finger, whereas the old one is a little bit more tame in my opinion. So the weight has changed now that we've gone down to a smaller form factor. And now we're looking at a 61 gram mouse is what they quoted. I'm getting about 59 to 60 grams with a little bit of cable on my scale. And so it's almost like they're over delivering to make sure that, you know what, they didn't go over that 61 gram. So they're giving themselves a little bit of leeway with the quote weight. Now I was a little bit disappointed by the speed flex cable that they put on this one. I feel like their old ones were better. It's not as fluid and it kind of keeps its shape. Um, I did notice it while I was gaming. It's not as bad as like a rubber cord but it was kind of stiff. I probably will be putting on my own paracord onto this mouse but you know what that can easily be fixed with the wireless version of the Viper Mini which I can see it happening very, very soon. So one of the main complaints of the original Viper and Viper Ultimate were the mouse one and two. Now Razer was using their optical mechanical switches in those, which eliminates debouncing. And that's one of the main selling points of this mouse. You're gonna have a faster response time with these switches over some metal switches like in other mice. And you're not gonna have any double clicking from debouncing. Now this sounds great, but through this, they lost that clickiness. They were very tame, the feedback, they were soft. And a lot of people didn't like that. It really took me some time to get used to them after switching mice and coming back to it. Now they've come back with an improved switch and boy oh boy are they clicky. Let's drop a sound test for you guys right about now. Oh yeah. 
Now there is some pre-travel as you move further out on the mouse. So you wanna have your fingers around the middle of the button to get the best use of that switch. But my whole thing with pre-travel is that we are human we're highly adaptable to whatever is in front of us. I mean, look at all these crazy Counter-Strike people with insane aim. They're using older Zowie mice and those have some of the worst pre-travel. So a little pre-travel isn't gonna kill any. It would be nice to completely eliminate it, don't get me wrong, but I don't think we're there yet. No mouse has completely gotten rid of it. So it is what it is until that next step in evolution of mice. So the side buttons have also improved as well. I noticed on my copy that the front button actually felt a little bit more clickier than the back button. Slightly different, um, that happens on some mice I found, but not a deal breaker here. So let's talk about the dimensions of this mouse. Now it is slightly longer than the MM711 in Ultralight 2, and it is two millimeters shorter than the Model O minus. It's not as wide in the back as the MM711, and it is slightly wider than the Ultralight 2, which I know a lot of people, including myself, had a lot of issues with the Ultralight 2 because your fingers had to come in so close and now adding a little bit of width with the Viper Mini makes all the difference in the world. The most surprising feature of this mouse is the hump. So not only is this mouse really good for fingertip grip users out there, I feel like this has an advantage over the Ultralight 2 in the fact that it has a very nice hump in the back for you claw grip users as well. It's literally the perfect in-between mouse. If you found the MM711's hump to be a little bit too much for you, I think this would be the natural mouse for you to get. Me having medium hands at 19 by 8.5 centimeters, my fingers hit in all the right places. The comfort grooves on the mouse one and two and on the sides make this mouse really good for fingertip grip. In fact, I go as far as to say, the hump is so big that it kind of makes palm grip a little bit uncomfortable. So if you have smaller hands and you're looking to palm grip, my palms start to get a little bit irritated over time. And in that case, I feel like the original Viper Ultimate might be better for you. Now, it seems like they've downgraded their sensor from the 5G optical sensor and the focus plus sensor on the viper and viper ultimate now down to just an optical sensor the differences that i found on the sensor is that this one can only go up to 8500 dpi whereas the other ones can go up to 16,000 and 20,000. now i don't know who actually uses 20,000 dpi it's mainly just a flex and just show how far we've come with sensors me personally i'm still at 400 dpi and i rarely see people go above 3200 and that's on the extreme side the other difference that this optical sensor has is that it has 35g of max acceleration whereas the viper has 50g and what that is is the max speed the sensor can take before it loses track of your surface. Now, mainly when people are moving their hands, you're looking at about 13G to 16G, so you're still way over what you would need, so it's not gonna be an issue. And I feel like they put this sensor in there to kind of cut down on the pricing to make this a really competitive mouse. The software is similar to what we've seen in the past from them. There's not as many options as on the Viper Ultimate because you don't have some of those settings from the Focus Plus, but you'll be able to control your DPI, the pulling rate, and also your RGB. Now I'm gonna do something I haven't done or said in a long time. And that is, this is my main mouse. And I have a feeling, I'm starting to get a feeling that a lot of you guys out there are gonna love this mouse too. Tracking, flick shots all feel great and they take advantage of that 61 grams. It's got comfort grooves in all the right places to make sure you can use this mouse and stay consistent over a longer period of time. So if you're a person that missed out on the Ultralight 2 or if you didn't wanna spend $120 on a mouse for $40? I would give this mouse a shot. It's not too often that you see a company come along and do something like that, especially on Razer's level. The one glaring issue I found with this mouse is that cable. And I have a hunch, I guess you could call it. And that hunch is that we're gonna see a Razer Viper Mini Ultimate or wireless sometime soon. And when that happens, all hell is gonna break loose. So Razer, thank you for releasing this mouse, like not only for me, but for you guys, because this price is crazy. The form factor is crazy. This is the mouse that we all needed to come out and now it's here and at a great price. All right, guys, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.